And then, uh, you know, we just kind of, over the years, again, Rick, Rick Faye and myself would literally travel every possible place we could to do seminars and workshops and bringing them in. And uh, then I got the opportunity to go to Thailand with him in 1989 for the first time. And the same, same thing, go to his house in Thailand and stay there. And every, every morning we'd get up and we'd, and we would time and spar and do clinch work. And it was just unbelievable Amazing. to be able to sit there and do clinch and get tossed around and thrown and show with, all these little with tricks. With the master. Oh, it was unbelievable. And that's really where I, I uh, obviously from a wrestling background, I, I had a certain base already developed and a, and a good sense of balance, but it's so different when you start, you know, have to bring your knee up to, after, you know, to go after an attack and then you're up on one foot and all the different ways to off balance and sweep and turn and twist and man, it was just like a whole other avenue of, of my training opened up. You know, I really got to see that that part of Thai boxing. And then of course he, he brought me to uh, a Thai boxing camp at that point in time. Uh, it, it was called the Son Pantale and they never had any, any white person there. Had really? Any Falong ever at that camp before. Wow. So got to go in there and Rainbow was training there at that point in time, Rainbow Son Pantale and what he was one of the top top guys and so I remember he said, Okay, just go up there and train. Actually Rob Kelly was there with me and so he would uh, he was there and we we're training and and it was pretty crazy because all I heard was Achan in the back when we were doing Thai boxing, he'd go, double kick. So every time I, you know, I'd kick, I would just kick as hard as I could. And I remember I was getting really tired, but I wasn't going to show it. I was just going to keep going until either I imploded or something happened, you know. And, and I just kept going and going. Plus you're amped first time in Thailand, you're in a camp, you want to, you you have Achan sitting right there and you just, you don't want to let him down. And I remember just going full power full speed as fast as I could and just kept going and going and going and then um, apparently and I, and I don't know this is what Achan says that when we were uh, talking with his with his brother-in-law with the camp owner that we were going to set up a fight with me and, and one of the Thai boxing guys and then after that the first training session and this, then the second one then the fight got cancelled so I think they thought that I was a karate guy and did and did don't know anything, but then when I started clinching in there and didn't feel anybody would, had clinched or had a wrestling base or anything of that nature yet, so it was pretty neat, you know. Nice. I was like, well, and I was still amped. I didn't know I wasn't going to be fighting, so I was like, oh man, I'm going to fight. And, you know, you, at first you go and you're just traveling and you're not really training 100%. And then all of a sudden you're training, you're like, whoa, I'm not in the best shape of my life. But I remember saying to myself, man, if I get in this fight and I'm getting some trouble, I'm just going to soup the guy. <laughs> <laughs> if all else fails, if all else fails, I'm just gonna toss them. But uh, you know, it, it ended up we just uh, just trained and we just kept on. You know, obviously every time I go to Thailand with them, you know, it, you train for a good portion of time. But then more than anything, and I always tell people this: if you're gonna go there, you got to make sure you're you're going around and seeing Thailand. You know, mm. spend a certain amount of time training, but man, there's so much to see. And so much to do over there, so and that I think is part of the whole developing of the of Thai boxing is seeing kind of how they are as a people and they develop and their whole mentality and all that really makes you see what how they uh, can become so good, so you know not so fast. I mean, they start from a little kid all the way up till you know you know they they end up quitting, and uh, and it's interesting because they don't ever have that ego like when you're training like. You know, for us, we want to make sure we get the guy more than he gets. It's all about learning and developing because they don't want to get hurt because they're fighting all the time. They don't have to prove themselves in the camp. They fight. And that has always been a, a big, you know, kind of like an inspiration in our training. I'm always telling people, hey, don't don't prove it in the gym. If you if you want to show how tough you are, hey, there are a lot of avenues to do it. It's called fighting, you know. And so, you know, it really... Uh, uh, has allowed a lot of our guys to grow, and he's paved the way for all of us to go to Thailand. And I've had several guys go over there, and I've had several guys fight since then. And and I went over there six times since then, and went to Kabikabong, went to the, the Putai Swan, and trained with Achan Samai, and had that opportunity. And I lived right there too. I went and stayed at that camp, just slept there with the guys, and Gosh. that was a phenomenal opportunity. 
and just uh, going to different camps every time I'm there. And, and then in 1996, myself, uh, James Cook, one of my other students, Adam Clary, now it's Adam Ahern, uh, he, uh, and two other guys, Mick Doyle and Kurt Padani, went to Thailand to represent the U.S. in the Princess Cup. And so that was really a, a, a neat experience. And basically, everything else fell apart because when we got there, the person who was supposed to pick us up at the airport wasn't there. The guy that was supposed to show us where to go wasn't there. The guy that, I mean, so who was there? Achan's family. And they pretty much made sure that we got taken care of and they were on the phone figuring out where we had to go and we finally got to the, find out we had to go to a sports authority, sports stadium, that this big, this new one that they built and we would have never had any clue. We would have been over there going, what do we do? And so uh, we got there, and then we ended up going up to Uttaratit, which is up by Chiang Mai, and, uh, and competing. And, and James won a bronze medal. Uh, Mick Doyle won a bronze medal. And Kurt Padani won a gold medal. And so it was a really great opportunity to get there and coach a bunch of guys and have them fight. And, and uh, out of those four guys, that, and Adam Cleary, he ended up getting his knee hit by some guy from Russia, I think it was. And so it kind of tweaked his knee out, couldn't, couldn't, uh, couldn't uh, finish the fight, so that was a bummer there. But out of the four guys that we ended up having as, as fighters, three of them medaled. There was 33 countries, Thailand had six teams themselves, so it was a great opportunity, and James fought. You know, all his fighters were from Thailand except for, I think, one of them, and, and uh, so he had a great opportunity, and it was just been uh, awesome. And pretty much Achan Chai and his family save the day there but without them I mean we would have missed, had another trip to Thailand <laughs> exactly <laughs> so, exactly but yeah it's been a it's been an unbelievable trip you know all these years and having that ability to work with guys of such caliber and learn and learning from them and then not only that but just meeting people from all over the country that are doing the same thing and almost anywhere you go right now you, there's someone doing Thai boxing that's associated with Thai Boxing Association USA, you know, so it's very easy to call up somebody, hey, I'm going to be in this part of the country, you know, or my one of my guys is going to be in that part of the country, you mind if they come in and train, and bingo, if they have a place to train, and it's like a big family, and it's always been that way, and that's something that Achan has always, always wanted more than anything, that everybody's like a big family, and try to nix all the politics as much as possible, and just put that aside, and you know, myself and you know, Rick, even though we end up going to different schools, we, we still train together. He's coming over to, to work some clinch work with me to get ready for camp. And so this, it's, we've tried to really uh, live that, that, that philosophy that uh, both uh, Achan Chai and Guru Dan ultimately want, you know, and try to just put all that stuff aside. Hey, we have, there's enough people in Minneapolis area that, that can deal with two schools, you know, so that's no problem. So we've always maintain a good friendship and uh, you know that's that's part of the whole thing and legacy that Achan wanted so that's how we've been uh, developing all these years that's awesome that's awesome